at our meeting last year, uh, I showed, uh, described some new methods for creating images of faults, uh, extracting fault surfaces, and estimating fault throws. And the side effect of developing those methods was uh, imaging some faults which had a shape that seemed unusual uh, to me. And I remarked at the time that the software doesn't, did not know to exclude such shapes just because they were unexpected to me. Um, and, and the shape is, as shown here, conical. So faults that have a conical shape. And I spoke about the same methodology, and I showed these, as best I could at the time, these conical faults um, at the SEG meeting. And both here and at the SEG meeting, and in other places I've showed this, I, I would often get a reaction like, oh, no, I've seen that before. Those are polygonal faults. And, and this bothered me, because a polygon is a two-dimensional geometric shape. And I'm talking about three-dimensional surfaces here. Right? And so even if you said that in cross or horizontal slices they were really polygonal, it doesn't describe completely what we're seeing, which is, well, I'll, I'll show you. And so I was a little bit frustrated by that, and John Clairbaut actually happened to be there at my presentation at the SAG meeting. He says, you need to create a YouTube video. <laughs> and, and some of you, I'm sure, have seen John's YouTube videos. But the really good advice, this is just one, he's got quite a few. There, you should go look. But, the best advice he gave me was, don't try to overdo it. Just take a camera, point it at your screen, and go. <laughs> and, and you know, I, I tend to want to prepare and make these things sound really polished. And so, um, and, but that was really good advice he gave me. And so I had like a, 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 a four hour block of time um, where I just closed my door and I said, at the end of this four hours, you will have put this, you will have created the video and put it up on YouTube. I tried the camera thing, and my camera was really bad. Um, but I did find some software that I had available to do it, and so I made this YouTube video. And I just want to tell you that, that this YouTube video has generated more direct responses to me, and not in the comments for the video, because people that are my age, or, or you know, they don't like to make comments on YouTube videos. They will send me email, however. In many cases, these are people I've never met. Right? Uh, which was wonderful. Um, and, and, and I was feeling pretty good because, you know, the number of views goes up in my sleep. You know, there's, I wake up next morning and I've had an impact in the world, you know, and I was feeling pretty good about that. And I said, well, I just wonder, like, what video on YouTube has, like, a really, you know, the largest number of views? Maybe I'm getting close. <laughs> and so this suggested I need new eyeglasses. <laughs> okay, all right, so a little more down to earth. The, the image in which we found these conical faults comes from the North Sea, and in particular it's called Block F3, and it's offshore Netherlands. And the, the image is provided by, uh, freely available, uh, by uh, uh, the Open Detect Seismic Repository created by uh, De Groot Brill Earth Sciences. We're very grateful for this, and you've actually seen parts of this image in previous presentations here. This is one horizontal slice at a time of 1.24 seconds. Um, there's uh, a salt uh, um, in this uh, image. Uh, but you'll also see this, what to me was rather unusual texture um, in this horizontal slice. And I say to me because Last year, people said, no, we've, we've seen this kind of thing in the North Sea, and that's, that political, that's, that's polygonal faulting. Well, you'll notice that I've circled four areas in this image. At the center of each of those circles is the axis of one of these conical faults. And I just happened to get lucky when I was developing these methods for imaging faults um, that I happened to pick a subset of this image that included cones two and three. Um, if I had used the, say, the eastern part of the image, I would never have seen them. Right? In fact, I've gone through the entire image looking, and I can find more shapes that are conical or fragments of cones, 
Um, but these four happen to be some of the best. And so that's why I circled them. And you'll also see a curve that goes through three of the cones, one, two, and four. And I'm going to extract a vertical slice from the 3D image and show you that in just a moment. But first I want to show you what happens if you run uh, uh, this fault imaging algorithm on the complete 3D image. And I'm just showing you this, this same horizontal slice. So there's a lot of complexity here. Uh, I mean, this, in this part of the image, the uh, geology is highly uh, faulted. Um, and you can, you can certainly see that here. But notice the scale. Uh, I mean, the scale is, <coughs> this is a, it's a big, it's an entire block. But look uh, at the center of the circle labeled 3. It's the one that doesn't have the curve going through it. And because of that, it's kind of easy, I think, perhaps to see. There's a, a circular shape it's there. Um, and that's what happens when you slice a cone horizontally, you're going to get a circle. Okay, we'll get back to that in a minute. I do want to say that this is, this fault-oriented semblance here is not what I described yesterday when I was showing semblance. That, you remember, I called structure-oriented semblance. And here, the first part, the first smoothing in the semblance, I called that smoothing one yesterday, uh, is very similar to what I do here. What's different here is the second smoothing of the semblance numerators and denominators because we have to scan. I've learned that I have to do this to really get good fault images. I must scan over all possible fault orientations right, in that second smoothing to be able to create good images of faults. Okay, but that's the only difference. So my subject today though is about visualizing these conical faults. Um, and one thing that, that can help, uh, not only in the visualization, but also in estimating the fault throws, is to use this image of, uh, of semblance, fault-oriented semblance, to scale those structure tensors in structure-oriented smoothing so that we do not smooth across these faults. Now, those faults in that image you just saw were like one pixel or one voxel in 3D thick, right? So that's about as thin as you can get in the seismic image. And so after the structure oriented smoothing, it's just three dimensional, we're smoothing up to, but not across those faults, right? So let me show you a, a vertical slice now uh, uh, through cones one, two, and four, and that's this, this AB slice. So this is the raw image without the smoothing, and this is the same image after this structure-oriented smoothing. And so I said yesterday I would show you examples of structure-oriented smoothing that creates these sort of knife-edge discontinuities, which in this case are the discontinuities uh, that are correlated with the faults. And I'll just flip forward, smooth, raw, smooth. All right. So I'm going to zoom in now um, and show you uh, these conical shapes. Uh, first thing I'll do is I'll show you the surfaces that were extracted at those four locations. Right? So you'll notice that cones one and two are a little bit bigger. Uh, notice that cone one has a vertical exaggeration, about five to one. Cones three and four are a little bit smaller. Also notice that the fault throw, which here ranges from like 0 to 35, 40 meters, uh, varies as you go around the cone. Uh, look at cone 3, and you can see that for part of cone 3, there's almost no throw. Right? Um, and then for other parts, the throw can increase rapidly um, with azimuth as you walk around the cone. All right, so let's look at the seismic images now extracted through the center of each of these cones. And I included a large uh, number of images. And don't look at the PDF right now, but you'll, you can almost make a movie uh, of what I'm going to show you next. And this is an idea that came from a conversation with John Scheinman during one of his visits to the Colorado School of Mines. And that was to say, well, if you're looking for something with conical symmetry, why don't you make a 3D volume where the, the coordinates are, I guess, uh, polar coordinates. And so distance here now is distance in a, north, a south to north direction, but it's distance measured from the center of the cone, which I just picked manually. 
On the left is the raw image. On the right is that image after the structure-oriented but fault-preserving smoothing. Okay. And now you can see very easily the sharp boundaries between the insides of the cones and the outsides. Uh, remember, the smoothing here has to be three-dimensional. You, you just would never be able to do this with a two-dimensional smoothing algorithm. You can't just take the image you see on the left and create the one on the right. The smoothing has to be in 3D. And that helps with the visualization because the smoothing is bringing information from other slices that you do not see here into this slice. And that's, that's what makes the, the image on the right uh, so much uh, easier to interpret. All right, so I can do this, though, for uh, any azimuthal angle. Right? So we'll, I'm just showing you now what happens if I make a slice in the sort of northeast direction. Now, this is a, an example where we don't have much throw on the left-hand side of the image. You can see, a, look at the smoothed image on the right. Uh, we do have some throw on the right. But as we go around, okay, so we're just spinning around this axis here. to see this first conical fall. OK, um, I'll just do more quickly now the second one. This is fault number two. So this is the south to north image. So now if they were perfect cones, and if the throw was constant for all these different azimuths, right, then the, you would just see these edges they wouldn't move, right? If I got the center of the cone just right. Okay, so they're not they're not perfect cones. Uh, these are the smaller ones, cones three and four. Okay, and here's number four. Okay, so you know now where the coordinates are. You know exactly what times I'm picking there. The image is freely available. You can go look for yourselves. Uh, but this was an interesting geologic puzzle. And as I said before, the YouTube video generated uh, uh, a lot of feedback uh, by emails to me, sometimes not directly to me, to someone else who would then forward them to me. Um, and these are people that I never met. And I, I probably forgot somebody's name in this list, but it was a pretty long list of people. And again, uh, uh, I only met some of these people in part because they're, they're not geophysicists, they're structural geologists. Um, and they, in my YouTube video, I solicited uh, opinions, uh, solutions to this geologic puzzle. Um, and I want to make sure I thank them here today. And that's, that was my brief uh, overview of what I'm doing here to visualize cones. Thank you. <laughs>